So today I have a super special guest. It's the first 10 minutes we're speaking to each other, right? Yes. <laughs> and I've already learned so much. So <laughs> There's a lot to talk about with this woman. So let's see where this is going to take us. So we have today uh, Gabriella. She will pronounce her last name and middle names and all of that. Cool. It would be impossible for me because there's so much... Uh, going on uh, but the truth is that I didn't even know that she was actually Romanian or at least was born in Romania and but she considers herself a woman from many parts of the world so there's so much to talk about I decided to just let's record and ask all questions live so <laughs> this is us <laughs> buckle up and yeah. let's go so you yeah. were born in Romania right so you're Romanian officially as your birthplace and yes. then, uh, but it, when it comes to your work, it never happened in Romania, as far as I can see from your LinkedIn profile, right? So no. you studied in Romania, and then, so first, I... sorry, your name, please. Yeah, yeah it's Gabriela, uh, and the last name is my uh, husband's last name, it's Kwahla, but I didn't, I don't pronounce it very well, so it's <laughs> Kwahla. I'm sure that all the Arabic-speaking persons will do hate me because it's no, quite loud, but they have the other way yeah it's fine <laughs> so actually this is the short because i have a very long i i kept my can we hear it so uh, the whole thing uh, Kuahla, it's uh, algerian mm -hmm. Ilie, it's romanian costinella is the first first name and gabriella right uh, my father was uh is in love with tennis so he named me about uh he loved the tennis uh, woman player, uh, Gabriela Sabos, something like that. So, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, it's, um, it's a name that uh, gathers all the, the things that they like. In our, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, in our family. So, yes, I was born in, uh, in Romania. Uh, actually, uh, let's say uh, I'm almost 100% Romanian, but uh, there are some... Uh, uh, French genes from my mother's side and mm -hmm. uh, she wanted me to grow up bilingual so she insisted on French from birth like my father no my father was uh, like you have to study you have to not speak very well Romanian because if you speak Romanian you will speak all the Latin based languages English French uh, sorry French uh, Spanish Italian Portuguese etc mm -hmm. and you have to study English my mother was like no she has to speak Romanian and French <laughs> and uh, of course, she studied Russian, as you know, mm. uh, all the Eastern Europe countries were very close to that. And uh, she, she insisted on French from little. So, okay. After, when I decided to, to, to study translations uh, and uh, I was in the second year of bachelor's degree, I went to Dijon with the Erasmus scholarship mm -hmm. in Dijon. Uh, and I was like, here I'm at home. This mm -hmm. is something that my parents didn't forgive me for years. I thought uh, here in France, I'm at home. It's my mm -hmm. place. So you actually moved there. You went for a uh, I went. I, yeah, I went for a year in uh, 2008. Uh, that was the second year of bachelor's degree in translation and um, interpretation. English, French, Romanian. But mm -hmm. actually, I did the, only the these three languages. This is why even if I speak a little bit of Spanish, Italian, or even Arabic, no, this is all, all my three languages. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and when I when I arrived in Dijon in 2008, I was like, "This is home. This is me, actually." Yeah, I love Romania, but uh, as an only maybe because I'm an only child, uh, I don't know. I felt uh, very compressed in Romania. The mm. mentality was very uh, at the time in 2008. It was very I don't know. I didn't breathe in Romania. Mm. So I finished the year where I also met my husband in Dijon. Actually, I did I. I can't say I hate him, but I didn't like it. He was very strange, and he was like, uh, like he he didn't talk with uh, with girls, etc. And I was like, he's very close-minded. I told you, I felt very, uh, very stuck in Romania. So I wanted mm -hmm. more, not freedom, but more, more, more open-minded, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like him. And after there was a, a boy, a very nice boy, uh, his father was uh, German and uh, his mother was Romanian. He was a singer. So he started singing Aisha. I the know, Chep I know, I love Chep it. Khaled, yeah, it's the <laughs> Chef Khaled song, Aisha. And my my husband, he smiled. For the first time, I saw oh. him smile, but with a big smile, it was in October, 2008. 
And I was, but he's really beautiful and he's very, I don't know. After he left, he left to Besançon. I continue my, my year. I mm -hmm. went back to Romania to finish mm -hmm. my third year. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I finished in Romania, you, you can apply for a stamp to be a certified translator. Mm -hmm. So I applied for that, but I told my, my parents, I will move to France. All by yourself. You are our only child. Where are you going? I yes, want to go I sing can't. Aisha for longer. Yes, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't stay here. So uh, I registered. I I sent my application to Dijon, of course, to Nantes, to Orléans, to Paris. I think five or six uh, the cities. And they accepted me in Dijon and they accepted me in Nantes. Mm -hmm. And I was like... For uh, work or for continuing your studies? For continuing, for master, mm -hmm. master degree. And I was like, I will go back to Dijon. Let's try another um, another city. And mm -hmm. I heard that Nantes is very open mm -hmm. and uh, very, 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 is the best town in, in France. If you oh. want to visit, visit. I, I really recommend Nantes. And uh, like after one week, I was in Nantes for my first year of master uh, degree. I met up with my husband. He was there studying, uh, doing his PhD degree, yes, second year. Oh. I was like, I don't want to say a bad thing, uh, word but I was like what I don't know <laughs> and he said yes I'm in my second year of PhD degree in computer science uh -huh. and I was like yeah okay <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh, like three months after we were engaged because I told you he's like more not serious but traditional he wants something yeah, traditional yes we were engaged and uh, in July 2011 we were married and uh, yeah, uh, one year after we had Karim, etc. But then we moved. We moved from Nantes to Saint Etienne. So, uh, after in Toulon, because he finished the study, I finished my studies, and I started working, but from home only. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it was my my second life because mm. now we in Algeria. I have my third life. <laughs> Each country a life, right? Yeah. So then yeah, when you but... finished your master's, you became a freelancer, right? A freelance translator. Yes. Is that what it is? Mm. It was, uh, yes, I became a freelance translator. But uh, um, in Romania, in 2008, they, uh, not the only option, but when we finished and mm. we received the stamp, the, the agreement, the, the certified, uh, I don't know how we call it, uh, agreement. Your, <laughs> your status we... was like a certified yes, translator. Yes. We started with uh, documents, you know, mm. birth certificate, uh, marriage certificate, uh, administra administration documents. So yeah. I started with that. I didn't know that there is another world, a bigger <laughs> world for translation. You actually can translate apps and websites yeah. and uh, many other things. And then I started with uh, the technical. So this is mm -hmm. the first love, I can say. The certified translation is the first love. Because after I applied for... Um, uh, to to be certified in France. This is why I I am certified to Romanian, but also to French. Oh, okay. Because I I applied to that in uh, in Saint Etienne, and I obtained that. Uh, and uh, I continue with the documents. After there were some um, technical requests about manuals, etc., mm -hmm. brochures. Uh, because my my internship uh, in the third year was in Electroputere. Uh, that uh, uh, that was the biggest. Uh, 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 factory in uh, in Krajowa, in my birth town, mm. and uh, so I had some knowledge about technical or everything about I don't know all the things to do, EC systems, etc. So that was let's say second love. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I continue working from home, then we have the LinkedIn boom. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was like in two thousand eighteen. We have LinkedIn was everywhere. They, I started to be more connected on LinkedIn. I realized we have the localization industry. Oh. I was like, well, I like that. And you can combine technology <laughs> mm -hmm. with, um, you can combine technology with languages. That's cool. Yep. And uh, there were some uh, stats in back before Corona. <laughs> it's another one before Corona about uh, that technology will uh, replace us, etc. But my husband told you, yes, technology will be in every now computer science. What can you expect yeah, from of him? Course. He will say, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, he told me, yes, technology will be in every, every, every domain, every mm -hmm. domain possible. But uh, the humans have to handle the technology. They will need 
um, people always. So what you can do is to, first of all, don't panic, don't be afraid and start learning. Mm -hmm. Start learning and diversify yourself. This is mm -hmm. one of uh, the, the advice. So why not combine uh, languages with technology? And I told him this is what actually localization does. Mm -hmm. Combines technology with, and I was more interested in localization. I started working with uh, several human people. And uh, if you really want to, to know more about them or the human people that I started really working with them in the localization industry, I, I know if you notice there is a, a multilingual article that I wrote for mm -hmm. the March edition. Uh, you are not alone. Uh, actually, I I mentioned several people that. Uh, Oh, you'll have to send me the link so that we can put yeah, it on. I will, mm -hmm. I will send you the link. And um, I started working with them. I was a newbie in localization, mm -hmm. but uh, they were very patient because let's be honest, before Corona, localization was still at the beginning. We had a lot of articles and etc. But now this, you open LinkedIn, you have, everyone is talking about localization. You have a lot of courses, you have a lot of uh, articles. But before Corona, there were still, uh, uh, like, how can I put it? Uh, there were still, uh, uh, not the beginning, I can't say it was the beginning of localization, but not like today, not mm. like uh, September 2023. Right. So, yeah. So uh, I love that. I love that. So that was uh, uh, the third, like, maybe niche. <laughs> uh, however, in the in the meantime, Mm -hmm. I, my husband, I, I, I talk a lot about him because we are more than married. We are like, uh, I don't know, we are more friends than mm -hmm, uh, actually married. And he told me uh, to all, as I told you, he told me to diversify all the services. And I started working with researchers. Mm -hmm. This is why maybe sometimes people don't understand what are you doing? What are you actually? What? And because I, told I them, saw I'm that you have some sort of a, an agreement participation I guess you're in the editorial board of this yes. let's see if I can say it international journal journal of informatics and applied mathematics I love it yes I, I started <laughs> with them this is what thanks to several professors that um, I, from Algeria and from France uh, they pushed me you mm. can do it I told but I'm a linguist how can I work in the computer science there are a lot of things no uh, they told me you you will not touch you will not touch the technical side but help us with the language and I was like okay you know that in north of Africa they are we are considered francophone so every time we submit an article mm -hmm. we we receive the same or almost the same comment poor mm -hmm. language or mm -hmm. you have to re re revise the language. And mm -hmm. I was like, but I don't work with English. My languages are French and Romanian. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of, how can I put it? Sometimes I had to to, to demonstrate that I can work with two target languages. That was before when we people insisted on one target language. Mm -hmm. But when I realized that my own child are trilingual now, and I hope my son, because he's very passionate on languages, he will maybe he will have three target language which is one day mm -hmm. so we are no more talking about multi uh, monolingual families there are mm -hmm. a lot of multilingual families there and there are a lot of uh, uh, of children in france for example that have two target languages because they grow up bilingual and i know that mm -hmm. anyway but i told them i can't i can't do that it you have to have anglophone specialist not uh, someone that works with uh, in French and Romanian, they told me, no, you can learn it. You can do it. You can, you can um, learn about how you structure a paper, how, the, mm -hmm. the, the phrases we need to express uh, our uh, results. And I started uh, studying. I did a lot of courses and many of them were free. And mm -hmm. I, uh, so I, I, I sent them my revision and I received a lot of feedback my first revisions were very maybe i don't know bad but <laughs> they told me that the, the, the phrases were too long mm -hmm. that the in scientific english is, has to be shorter mm -hmm. uh, that i have to use uh, uh, verbs more, more academic verse so the beginning that was mm -hmm. in 2018 there was some time to get used to it some learning curve yeah so i continue and i continue 
and uh, now I think things are better <laughs> because uh, I o- almost every paper that I work on it's accepted in international journals or conferences. Mm-hmm. But again, um, uh, I don't actually propose a proofreading service for researchers. It's actually more like a solution. It's more like a mindset, a solution because they don't really need only the proofreading. They need encouragement. They need mm-hmm. help. If if you work with um, researchers from North Africa, from Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, they need the local uh, payment. Uh, for example, they want to pay in Algerian dinar mm-hmm. because many, so they need many, someone many... local, basically, who can help yeah, and yeah. who knows what they're talking about and who can receive exactly. their currency, <laughs> basically. Exactly, and uh, they want encouragement because many of them uh, have uh, have received the rejects and mm-hmm. um, they are disappointed, and uh, sometimes their own supervisor don't help very much because. Mm-hmm. This is the truth. Mm. Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia are not anglophone countries. Mm-hmm. They are not prepared for the in- international English. Nowadays, yes, Algeria, now this is the first year Algeria uh, is uh, has introduced English in uh, in universities. For example, mm-hmm. my husband uh, is, uh, is, uh, is teaching in English this year, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they still need the, 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 the English we use for the academic scientific uh, Domain, we, before we go any further into the Algeria life, the third <laughs> life, right? Let's yeah, talk yeah. about how it happened so that you went from France, from the second life, because <laughs> we know yeah. now the first life was in Romania, then you went, we already know, to France, and then from France to Algeria. I'm very curious about this uh, decision of actually going to Algeria. I'm fascinated well, by this fact. Let's go. Well, uh, it was 2014. Yes, mm-hmm. we were in Toulon. We had uh, a bad experience with uh, the city of Toulon. Mm. Uh, my 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 daughter was born a, a premature baby, mm-hmm. but a very good premature baby. But we were <laughs> alone. Actually, my my family was in Romania. Mm-hmm. My husband's family was in um, in Algeria. Our f- best friend was uh, Brahim was in uh, Lyon, uh, and other close friends were not were not near us so we had we were very lonely mm-hmm. he was teaching at the university of Toulon I was freelancing and mm-hmm. having two kids that mm-hmm. they are you felt 16. like you didn't have a sport system right yes uh, my kids were, are only 16 months uh, apart there's only a 16 month mm-hmm. year apart and um, uh, my husband told me that he he wants to to make a change and I told him what do you mean by that he told me that that moment in Algeria they were recruiting uh, university uh, uh, lecturers mm. because he was still a uh, young he was he was in his second year after he defended his thesis mm-hmm. but I told him yeah but I already knew Algeria so I, mm. I was you had like, visited a lot yeah but mm. I was like there is no internet and I only work online uh, there the connection is via, very poor and uh, oh. I don't know, it was very strange at that moment for me. And uh, he, I don't know, he told us, he told me that maybe we should put on the paper what's the pros and the cons. Okay. And what uh, the biggest pro is that uh, we had more support. Uh, the children had at least one pair of grandparents because children need uh, grandparents. They really need the to have grandparents near them. And also uh, he, he told me that you will have more um, exposure. Mm. And I was like, what do you think that? Because you have uh, already experience and uh, we will work to do something maybe new. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you will see, it will be something new because people love new things. People love uh, uh, professional People, this is why I have one article. I said that I'm not a professional translator. I'm a translator because if you are a translator, we have to be professional. Mm-hmm. And he told me, you will make a difference. You will see people will notice the difference. And I told him, but I already have the my business in France because I'm uh, registered in France. So I can't. Mm-hmm. He told me, but you can keep it. And it's not very far. It's only one hour of flight. And you can, uh, you will see, you will not open something very quickly in, in Algeria because the... The, the the administration is very slow, so we 
we moved in uh, moved. I can't put, I can't say because we have an apartment in in Saint Etienne. We go back to Saint Etienne <laughs> right. after we live too long, so we have everything there, and we go there several times a year. But uh, uh, he started working with university. I was like, but I want to open something here. I can't, I can't work like this. So I I went to ask. That was in uh, 2016. I went to ask how can I open a linguistic agency or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told me, oh, you are not Algerian. No. Oh, you can open the, yourself. You have the, We have a law of 49, uh, 51. If you want to open an agency, you have to do it uh, with an Algerian person. Uh -huh. You can't uh -huh. be 100% uh, owner. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I will try. I asked my husband. He wasn't able because he was rolling, working with the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and several person near me, they were in the same situation. You can't uh, work for the state and open a business. Yeah, yeah. So and it was very difficult. After uh, I insisted, I made a lot of procedure, and then we have Corona. When Corona mm -hmm. came, everything stopped. And uh, in uh, in uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, I restarted the procedure. So in the meantime, I started. I continue working with my. French uh, business uh, and traveling between between countries. Mm -hmm. uh, kids were following the, the Algerian education system, but also working with the, the French language uh, in courses. And at the beginning of last year, I went to ask, uh, what can I do? And they told me, oh, actually, uh, our president, Mr. Tebun, changed the law for some, uh, for, for some codes. I was like, I don't understand. What do you want to do? I don't know. I want to be a, I, I want to open a linguistic agency. Like what? You with translation, with the stamp? No, no, not with the stamp, because mm -hmm. this is, I already have it. No, a linguistic uh, agency where I can receive documents, where I can proofread, where, where I can proofread the papers, thesis, uh, I don't know, apps, website. Mm -hmm. Oh, so maybe something like, uh, uh, data management. We can put it like that if you want, but it will be a uh, more linguistic side. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, they changed that. They, for some cause that not are very, very, are not related to natural resources, mm -hmm. you can open by yourself even if you are not Algerian. And I was oh. like, sure. They said, yes, but we have the law, but we don't have the text of law. What do you mean? I don't know what documents you need. <laughs> I was like, are, are you seriously? Are you serious? What do you mean? You have the law, but you don't have the text of law. I don't know if this is a correct translation in English. Yes, yes, we have the law. It's new, but I don't know what do you need for the for the file for the mm -hmm. right for the to, request. to file. Yeah. And I was, uh, can you check? And we insisted. We insisted. We we went to Algiers. We we there is someone here from uh, Gelma. Who, who called someone in the, the west part of Algeria, etc. In the end, on eight, uh, uh, on May 8, uh, 2022, the Beyond World Linguistic Service was open in Algeria legally. Wow. And that was also a great date because uh, uh, on May 8, uh, they have a ceremony for, uh, I don't know, it's something sad, but it's an important date in this mm -hmm. region. So it was like a sign, I guess. It's uh, related to the colonization of, uh, of mm. Algeria by France and a lot of, anyway, it's something sad and uh, this is history. We have to learn from history to do better things, I guess. For sure. Anyway, it was like a sign. So mm -hmm. I opened that and I already had the background researchers with the professor, I told you, with the journal, etc. So now what, uh, what was cool is that all was legal. Mm -hmm. So from that date, uh, I have the, I have the, the agency here, and after I search, is there a, a other agency? Anybody else can, doing the same? Anybody else, yeah, doing the same. And I didn't find, I didn't find anything related to localization. Yes, there are uh, linguistic agencies, mm -hmm. but not specialized. And I told my husband, you know what? I will keep my French business for certified. Um, uh, technical and localization side, 
my international clients because mm -hmm. I don't my head is shakshuka. I told him my head is not shakshuka. <laughs> I will keep yeah, I will keep my French uh business for international projects. Mm -hmm. And in Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, the north of Africa, I will only keep uh, working with researchers only. I don't want to work with Algerian uh, companies. I don't want to work with Algerian uh, uh, Moroccan uh, agencies or companies. Mm -hmm. I don't. I want only to work with researchers and right. to help them to break this uh, language barrier mm -hmm. every time they they submit a paper. Or even for a thesis, it's very rare thesis, but paper is like every day now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and I want I want to really really specialize what I'm doing. I don't want to do everything. I don't want mm -hmm. to do all the languages, and I don't want to to perturb people. For example, if someone is looking for a French or Romanian translator, certified or technical or for, to localize an app, a blog, or I don't know, I will speak to them from my French side of business. Mm -hmm. Here in the north of Africa, even if sometimes I, re I do receive a translation a request for certified translation because I'm the only French Romanian certified translator in the region and I already notified the embassies uh, and they send uh, they only send me some clients from time to time, not very often, but mm -hmm. I, I received a call yesterday, for example, from uh, Romanian in the west part of Algeria. She was looking to translate everything from French to Romania for wow. her marriage. Yeah, it's uh, one or two per month mm -hmm. from the, all three countries. countries. Um, and I was like, you know, people love uh, solutions. They mm -hmm. don't love services. You, everyone proposes services. There are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of LSPs in the world. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people working. But I don't want, at least here, I don't want to, to provide a service. I want to provide a solution and I only want to work to researchers. Mm -hmm. So in my head, when I'm talking, uh, when I'm he not here, but at least when I'm talking about papers and theses, uh, especially from these three countries, I'm only working with researchers. I didn't, I haven't worked with a, an Algerian company for a website or for a or an app. I, I don't want because it's uh, this is something that I'm not specializing. I don't. Mm -hmm. I believe in specialization. I believe that if you really want to do a good work, you have to only do maybe two, three specialization and stop. You mm -hmm. can't do everything, you know. And I'm already working with. Uh, as I told you, two tricky languages and for papers, there is the English involved. But again, this is something that I'm working with researchers, mm -hmm. for researchers, but with them. I'm not working and say, this is your paper, you can submit it. No, it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. it's a so then you, you created this name Beyond Words just for your business in Algeria? Or is this the name that you also use in France? Because yes, no, in you France, don't use English in your <laughs> work in Algeria necessarily mm -hmm. as... I it actually started like uh, in France, no, because in France I'm just like a translator entrepreneur. Ah, so mm -hmm. you use your name. Your you name. have to use your name. Yes, when you search it on, on Google, you mm -hmm. will find it like this. And actually, the Beyond Words uh, started in French. Actually, the name was in French uh, because I want I, I want to tell. I told my husband, um, I'm not I'm not a normal person. <laughs> I don't, I'm not That's a normal great. translator. No, I, I, I like in the sense uh, I want I don't want to be uh, I want to be professional, but I don't want to stop to the professional side. I want to be human. I want to go mm. beyond the words. And I was like that in French. I was oh, explaining I that in French. I want to, to I don't want to, to work with hundreds and hundreds of people. I want to have some close uh, clients and I want to do I want to go beyond words for them. Mm. I want to understand what they want. For example, uh, I'm still learning. I learn every day. Every every day I will learn every day. I'm I'm only a newbie in my head, but I want them to feel that human interaction. Even if we only speak, uh, you can imagine ninety percent of my clients and have never met them face to face. Of course. Yeah. So I want them to give this uh, feeling of uh, that I'm when I work for them for them or with them. Actually, mm -hmm. with them, I prefer to say with them, not for them. Right. I want to go beyond words. Mm -hmm. so that but when you the... work with your all of your other clients, the international clients, then you put on the 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 French <laughs> style, yeah, the, right? The French, then they're your clients. Yes. 
Yeah, because uh, actually I didn't change uh, a lot of cl uh, clients. I have some close clients. Uh, I have five, six years with them. So how can I put it? Uh, money is important yes. for everyone. Mm -hmm. And you need them to travel. And uh, as in my case, uh, if they, you want your kids to really learn a language, you have to travel and to bring them uh, and to, you have to, for example, they need to see, they need to travel to Romania every year. They need to stay in France for several weeks per year. So they can not only learn, uh, learn the language, but also to be localized in their heads, you know, to uh, really understand the culture. So that's expensive. So money is important. But for me, um, I don't want to be obsessed with money. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that was like, okay, last year I had a breakdown because I understand that sometimes money is important if you have if you want to have more exposure money is important but i don't want to lose this human side because mm -hmm. when you're concentrate a lot on money you don't really have time to 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 write more than one or two phrase in a email for example uh, i have several uh, close friends uh, from beluga but i can say them they are a great team beluga or yep. lama from slovenia and uh, the the agencies or I don't know, Nadia from One Soil or Philippe from Exact Health. Uh, if you concentrate only on the profit side, you reply, okay, note it for the document. Uh, I will send it uh, tomorrow at 5 mm. p.m. But you create a relationship with the people, Yes, I right? tell, how are you? I hope you are well. Of course. Uh, and uh, I, I hope you are, uh, I don't know, they tell me about uh, their stuff. I tell them about my stuff. They are asking me about the kids. Uh, Alama Tim, who is uh, from Slovenia, they send me uh, a picture every year for my birthday with all the old team and uh, Beluga. They always they are they are very human, etc. So I prefer to to have maybe less profit, but feel that I can I I'm in touch with human people because uh, I see colleagues that um, uh, had trouble with payments uh, with. Uh, I don't know things like this. I'm a lucky person. I I have have never had a problem with a payment mm -hmm. because I I prefer to have less clients and more human work than more clients. More and collaborations, less. right? Yeah, exactly. So and uh, I don't know when you work with with researchers, especially you don't have a lot of profits because they can't pay. Mm -hmm. You uh, here in Algeria, a, a, a PhD student has between seventy and one thirty dollars per month, and the minimum uh, salary wage mm -hmm. is uh, between one hundred and one hundred and fifty and two hundred dollars per per month. So mm -hmm. you can't charge like I charge. For example, if I work with a researcher from France. Of course, you can charge more, but he will, he or she will not pay because in France, the laboratory pays for them. Mm -hmm. So of course you can charge more. But when you work for, with researchers from uh, Algeria, or Morocco, or Tunisia, you can't charge a lot because they pay from their pocket. There is no uh, funds for the linguistic side. Mm -hmm. So of course they are not of, of profits, but. Um, when I received the news uh, that uh, I was voted uh, as a finalist in three categories for Digital Women Awards this year, uh, and I wanted to travel to London, I realized that zut, <laughs> the funds are important, money is important because you need to travel. And it's expensive, it's very expensive to travel to London. And I was like, how can I do for the future? This is something that I was thinking these days this mm -hmm. is something i'm struggling these days because uh to find I don't that want... balance between your business side and your personal side yeah because i want not to promote uh myself uh like a, a french romanian translator but i want to promote uh, what beyond words language service is doing in in uh, in the north of africa because mm -hmm. africa for me it's still an underestimated uh, uh, continent and sure. uh, I was talking with Joh uh, Johan uh, for during lock lunch uh, of uh, Cape, Cape Town. Uh, yes, because you're an ambassador for lock lunch too, right? Algeria, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was talking to him, and he said, "Yes, it's very difficult from people from Africa to travel to international 
conferences uh, because you can't really charge here in Africa. What you are going to charge the same rate you are charging for uh, UK based clients or uh, mm -hmm. uh, German uh, German clients. You can't do that. It's not fair. If you if you really aim to break down the language uh, linguistic barriers in Africa, you don't have to create more difficult difficulties for the for people. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you work in good companies, yes, they will pay. Maybe there will be more profits. But I choose researchers. I love researchers. My husband is a researcher. <laughs> I love researchers. So I will. I also uh, worked as a researcher in the beginning of my career. So I know. I know so what you mean. <laughs> so, and uh, now, a days, uh, I'm living in Gelma. It's a small uh, city it's not very far from Anaba which is the third uh, city in Algeria mm. and two times when I went to uh, Anaba I was at the airport and uh, there were some researchers that we didn't we didn't we only talked via um, email or messenger and I was you are Gabriela and <laughs> I was like yes I'm Amina you probably read my articles you remember yes sorry I <laughs> My I have a lot of Aminas, but yeah, then I remember <laughs> I and I was like, Yeah, thank you very much. You are very kind. And people, there are people when my husband is the head of the computer science department now, and now he already six years now. But uh, sometimes he goes to re, I don't know, conference reunions, mm -hmm. and sometimes oh, your name is Kwahla. I know someone is working in <laughs> with researchers. So you're and more says, famous than him. <laughs> yeah, this is what, yeah, it's my it's my wife. Oh yeah, she's very nice and very professional. Wow. That was and told you the moment I, I wanted to say I'm not a professional translator, I'm a translator, I'm a linguist. <laughs> to talk. She's very and she respects the guidelines and she's always helping us. And she did a really cool thing with the follow-up because as I told you, um it's not a service, it's a solution. Beside mm -hmm. the proofreading, I only I also follow up with the work. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really charge an extra because I, I don't think it's fair. And I I told them I I don't want you I don't want to proofread your paper. I want you to publish your paper. So uh, the the whole procedure is from contact till publication. Mm -hmm. And while this is something new, we didn't have that in Algeria. And this, no no no. no. And that is the best profit you can have. Yeah. This this is a, the best legacy I can give to my children. People, if even if I do mistakes, I do mistakes every day. And I'm still learning and I will learn. But I don't want people to say uh, she's, uh, I don't know, she is just another translator. Mm -hmm. I want them to think about she's our partner for our research work. I don't right. want to be a limit for them. So in that case, since you're in your third life and yeah. super young. <laughs> I'm not young. I'm 35. Oh, my God. I'm, yes, I'm going to be 46 old. next month. So I guess yeah, I can, I can say you're young. <laughs> you're very young, obviously. Um, and there's a lot to do, I suppose. So do you foresee the future in your future with your kids and your husband and all of that in Algeria for many time, for many years or... Do you think that you guys just, uh, if if something shifts or if something happens, you're just open to to moving back to France or a new country or uh, bring your your research uh, partners to the rest of the world? What are you thinking for the near future? Uh, actually, we, as I told you, in my head, I'm living between two countries. I can't mm -hmm. say that my own my only residence is in Algeria. I, I'm between two countries in mm -hmm. my head. This is why it's Chakshuka. <laughs> Again, I'm insisting on the fact. Uh, he this year he obtained his. Uh, he's only he's only thirty eight years old, and he's already a full professor mm -hmm. because he also started young. Uh, so he received his last uh, academic level. I can mm -hmm. I don't know how to put it. Yeah. So now he's concentrated on working on improving the department, mm -hmm. and also with the research, and also. I re with helping students because he's for the students. Everyone calls him a stu the student's lawyer. That was like, oh. <laughs> maybe you, you know the Lincoln lawyer on Netflix? You are the student lawyer. <laughs> and I know he wants for the next years to keep working here and bring mm -hmm. a change. I want the same, 
the fun thing, the, the cool thing about me is that I can work from everywhere. Yes, but for he sure. can't. He <laughs> can't work from everywhere for now. So I think that uh, for the at least till my my son will be in uh, university, that will be in how many, how many uh, eight years. At least for the next eight years, we will still have the same uh, lifestyle, mm -hmm. traveling uh, between, sorry, between Algeria and France, going every summer for one month, one month and a half in Romania. Mm -hmm. It's mandatory they, for the kids to 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 know all the three cultures. You can't work in localization and bring uh, up. Uh, <laughs> kids without the long localization touch because i told them you can't yeah i told my especially my my son he's 11 now you speak you speak arabic yes you speak french yes you speak at least 70 percent romanian yes but you have to know the culture you are not doing you you can't really speak a language without knowing the culture mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like why i'm going to Romania every year yes but you have to understand have you seen that when you speak with your Algerian grandfather, it's not the same when you speak with the Romanian one? Ah, yes, they have different tradition. Hey, that's called localization. <laughs> that's called localization, baby. And you have to to travel and have to to live mm. the Romanian culture. And you can be every anything you want. You you can you can define yourself as you like but you have these origins and you have to be proud and each language matters you i will never let anyone says oh arabic is more important than romanian or french is more important than arabic because the french passport is uh, it's red and the the algerian mm -hmm. passport is green and you know the no every language matters every language dialect matters so you you decided to speak all three languages you have to learn all three cultures and you have to live all three cultures so to answer your question for at least for the next 8 years uh, we will have the same uh, lifestyle because uh, i think it will benefit to for everyone mm -hmm. you can't really uh, learn very well arabic in europe it's you can speak of course you can learn it but it's it's much easier to learn French and Romanian in an Arabic country mm -hmm. than Arabic in a non-Arabic country. This is my feeling. Mm. You have to, because Arabic you have to practice very very much. They have like three or four ha. I don't know ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I say, the sounds are just fascinating. I love music in Arabic, and it's something that I would I would learn if I if it made any sense. But if I could just wake up learning a language or knowing a language, that that would be my second choice for sure. German and then Arabic, because it's ab absolutely amazing in their culture and the music. And I, I really like it. And I've, I've been close to it ever since I was about eight years old that my father moved into the Arab world <laughs> for work. Yeah. So I was in touch with it for, for a long time. And it's really relevant for me. So I understand. Thank you so much for allowing yeah. me to have a I look at you, your <laughs> melting pot head. <laughs> uh, I I don't think people understand. This is, uh, I told you, I, I'm not an oral person at all. <laughs> and I have a lot of things in my head. Sorry. Uh, That's this great. is me. It's a, I'm a complicated person. Even I can't keep up with the posting schedule. I don't know if you, <laughs> if you read my LinkedIn post. I can't People try to have a schedule to post about, no, what's going in my head? I will post it if I can, if I want. I'm the same. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so people maybe sometimes don't understand what I am, what where I'm coming from, you know, because they see Gabriela, they automatically maybe say, ah, oh, she's European. But then she said that they, they read Algeria first, uh, Algeria based first of course. And see, she's European or she's Algerian. We don't know. Yes. It's I kind of knew you were European. I just didn't know exactly if you were French, if you're Romanian, you turn out to be both, and then you're everything else. Yeah. So it's fine. <laughs> what so is now, great is now people will know more about you. That's great. That's great, what, great news. What is great is that uh, no, I'm not. I'm not very. I'm not very close to Romania, beside my my parents, and only going for the summer. But uh, I don't know how there is a, a Romanian association in Lyon. I think that they nominated me for uh, uh, top 100 Romanians abroad. And mm -hmm. I received like uh, two weeks ago, I received a notification that I will be in the top uh, 100 Romanians abroad for the 2000, 
2023-2024 edition. Wow. And I was like, what's this? Oh, we want to celebrate Romanians that are inspiration for other Romanians, oh, uh, Romanians that are living abroad for mm -hmm. Romanians uh, in, um, in, uh, in Romania. And I was like, that's nice. I'm coming back to Romania now after, I don't know how many years, 15 years. Like that. Yeah, that's nice so, that they acknowledge your yeah. importance and success and impact. I guess it's it's the most relevant thing is the impact that you have wherever you are. But they don't are. understand. I didn't think they, <laughs> they understand what I'm doing. <laughs> well, we, we have sometimes uh, a, a profession where people are not very yeah. sure about what we do. I know all of that, but I'm sure that they know something or else they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't nominate you. So I'm sure that, that they're yeah. aware, aware uh, that you're relevant. <laughs> I'm grateful for to the multilingual uh, uh, team that they decided to publish the article uh, because I started, it's like a diary. I will send mm -hmm. you the link. It's like a diary from my beginning still now. And it was uh, it was for the human edition, the March uh, edition. And uh, I wanted to give, uh, to send my gratitude to all the great women, but mm -hmm. also some men because uh, we can't live without men, men, we can't live without women. But uh, uh, I, what I want to say to all the translators is that if you stay human, despite the digital <laughs> and uh, and you learn every day and your mindset is set on uh, uh, creating a solution, not services, you will always be successful. You always find work. Mm. If you, but don't stop learning. Don't stop because I told you, sometimes I feel like uh, don't stop learning if you really want. Don't stop learning and embrace technology. I'm sorry, but technology is the future. Yeah, yeah. and the present. So <laughs> The present okay. and the future, yeah. So we will end on this note. Thank you so much, for Gabriela, for being here. And it was a pleasure to get to know you better. <laughs> I, so. I know it's complicated, but it's great that we had the chance to talk. And we will do so again one of these days. So thank you so much for being here, for taking some time off your super busy schedule with many kids and your researchers and your work and everything else. So yeah, I The really researchers are my it. kids. <laughs> also. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye.